Hello, uh, survivors of the apocalypse. Welcome back to Atom RPG and playing hardball. We have found the bunker in the mountain pass of Woos. And here's the entrance and we will see what is going on inside in just a moment. There's a red star on the gate. So let's check this one out. Yeah, we had a nice barbecue after this long hike. What is this? Oh ho! A condom and some water. An empty canteen. Yeah, we can actually leave the stuff here, I think. Outside. There's a log there. Aha, uh -huh. something else. Some more paper. Yeah, we are just leaving the stuff outside. Okay, nothing there. And actually, I feel we could probably at least leave the metal armors in here. Let's do that. And the logs. Or maybe actually, sorry, we should probably... Oh no, we don't have any tins, right? Did we get any tin? Tin cans? No, we didn't. Oh no, we do have three of them, okay. Um, but we don't, we didn't get any plastic bottles, so we can't make regular bowls. But I think we can actually make some metal bowls. There. There. That frees up some space. And now we only have one tin can left. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's put the metal armors in here because they are so heavy. And I guess the rest we can we can uh, take inside. Or let's let's keep let's leave all the armors uh, uh, back here. The AK is also. Four kilograms, we're not going to use it. Oh yeah, and well, the locks. It all depends what we find inside, actually. If there's civilization inside or something else. So let's see. Quick saving the game and then let's go in. There's nothing here, yeah. No, nothing there. Just an old truck. Oh, and actually let's actually let's ready our weapons. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, it actually looks in good condition. Pretty pretty thick bunker door. Which is on the other hand open. Or SKS. Readying our AKMS and readying the PPS. 43. Let's see. Come down here. Aha. Gets open. Oh, this looks like someone cut through these uh, metal bars. Ah, yeah. Oh, there's a round. Another round uh, room there. one's locked. Let's use our bunch of keys. Locking. Fail. There. That was a tough lock. Ah, yeah. 
some ammo. Black powder. Ah yeah, nice. Bolts. And rather rare ammo. That's good. Oh, nice. Armor piercing rounds and the cheese. That is, that must be a rather old uh, and very, very ripe cheese, right? Yeah. Two old shoes. Ah, there's a body there. What's going on? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Stimulant. Some rounds, yeah, I think Alexander can carry that stuff. So someone barricaded him or herself in here. Ah, oh, yeah, this police cap. Like the one our favorite mayor, we had unloaded weapons. Exogen, you can take those. Or Rusty Thou. Rusty TT pistol, Rusty AK, both unloaded. Fidel, you can carry them. Oh, and uh, Rusty RPD, that one is heavy. Alexander, you can carry that stuff. All right, three empty bottles. Beside the corpse, aha, uh -huh, just cast Baromid, well. Okay, so, no information what was going on here. But whatever it is that is in here, they had their little weaponry going on. Also locked. Yeah. So, now for the central room. Aha, uh -huh, there's something, a photostat. Let's have a look at that one, photostat. Photostat of a mass-produced note. There are a lot of these, albeit almost unreadable, torn or scorched, scattered around. Four years since we last talked to the central base of operations and still we are living as a friendly, hard-working collective, doing what needs to be done, protected from the outside radiation by our walls. So why the panic? Why are you going crazy now, instead of four years prior when news of the catastrophe were still new? Why are you spreading lies about the biolabs becoming incapable of food production? Why do you entertain thoughts of opening our sealed bunker and giving up to whoever is now in charge of our destroyed planet. Why are you spreading disgusting ideas such as this stupid there was no war theory? Why are you attacking the morals of the collective? Next time I hear any of the above mentioned shit, I will execute the guilty party in the name of science, morals, camaraderie and the Soviet government. Not a joke, Major Verbitsky. Hmm. So... The Soviets had some trouble maintaining the discipline here, huh? Or people just went insane inside the bunker, which is kind of understandable. The built-in computer screen lights up with the dim light. It looks as if there is not enough electricity to power the thing completely, okay? We noticed that someone recently rubbed the dust from the display and the keyboard. This means that someone was here before us. After our eyes grow accustomed to the uneven light of the display, we start reading a message dedicated to someone named Comrade Error. Comrade Error, welcome to the integrated OWL2OB operating system. Please use the arrow keys to move through the system, uh, through the menu. Under this message, we notice a list of possible commands and a blinking cursor. Ah, oh, yeah. Energy supply. Energy supply to substructures of the object. Blue wing, personal rooms, barracks, mess hall, kitchen, status, normal energy supply, stopped 19 July 1989, reinstated via usage of reserve generator on 
20th July 1989, so one day later. Further problems not found. Okay, personal rooms, barracks, mess hall and kitchen. Uh -huh. White wing, power station. Status generator M1, Max shut down on 19-7-1989. Auto repair sequence started. Power from generator M1, Ilish. Spread to other substructures starting with 20 uh, with 20th July 1989. Oh, yeah, so they had on uh, the 19th of July 1989 they had a huge problem, but it looks like they managed to yeah kind of solve it. Biolabs, Green Wing status today is 1998 or what? Is it 1998? Well, auto doors and points 32 and 25 did not receive recommended monthly maintenance tests. Hydraulic systems need check up, further problems not found. Oh no, okay. That was just the incident. Red Wing Anomalous Material Status. Okay, back. Air filtration. Status of ventilation and air filtration units. Blue Wing Personal Rooms, Barracks, Mess Hall, Kitchen Status Normal. White wing, power station, status normal. Green wing, bio labs, explosion based contamination of air in point 35. Uh -huh. Air quality control offline. Red wing, anomalous materials, explosion based contamination of air point in, for, in point 43. Air quality control offline, okay. So it looks like we can actually move around freely, except for the red wing and the green wing. Temperature. Temperature analysis and substructures. Blue wing, personal rooms, barracks, mess hall, kitchen, normal. That is normal. White wing, power station, that is normal. Green wing, bow labs, that is climate control offline. Moisture levels increased. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess that could mean there is plant life going on. Red wing, anomalous materials, that is normal. Okay. Access. A map of the bunkers displayed on the screen. It looks like this underground facility is divided into four large wings. To the left of us is the blue wing where the personnel lived. Yeah, I think that's where we go first. To the south of the blue wing, there's the white wing that contains the generators and other devices meant for producing energy. That's where we go second. Um, yeah, and, and to, uh, unless we run into trouble in the blue wing. Because then we go to the, uh, uh, in, uh, yeah, in the blue wing. Then otherwise we go to the white wing and repair anything technical. In front of us to the north is the green wing marked as biolabs. To the right is the red wing marked as anomalous materials. Okay. Under the map image we can see a large log. Each entry marks the date and time when each door was opened. We note that even four years after the war. The bunker was still full of people who moved between the wings, living their lives underground. This lasted until 25th of September 1990. The next 10 years and the log are completely empty. Mm -hmm. However, recently the door into the red wing was opened again and later sealed from the other side. We look at the date in the log. It happened only a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Seems like the Red Wing is where the cultists went to. This makes the Red Wing our ultimate target. Okay. But I think, yeah, we are checking out the other areas first. So working with the M interface. All right, that's interesting. Interesting. So that's the north. Not just running forward. What did it say? So this here is the... Yeah, this is the, the living area, right? Yeah. Some people, dead people. We can't hear anything and it's, uh, it looks like this is deserted. Oh, oh, oh. Interesting. Oh, there's something. We hear movement. Oh, there is something going on here. Okay. Interesting. Quite interesting. Well. Quite interesting. So let's go 
let's go here first. Although like the... Ah, uh, this is the green wing, I, I assume. So there has been some form of incident and there is some... Well, life was created apparently. This here is the... Oh, that's the lab. Yeah, this must be the white wing then. Oh yeah, well, there's something here for sure. Okay. Well, I think we are going to the to the living area first. Although I fear that we will be totally overburdened again with stuff, but you know, maybe we find we also we need to find some clues what's going on here so we can be prepared um for anything. Tin. Woof woof woof. Jilba, what's going on? Boy, what's going going on? Jilba pants, sticking his tongue, uh, his white tongue out. When he notices us, looking at him, he barks cheerfully. Oh yeah, well, good boy. We stroke him. The dog puts his head on our hand and licks it from time to time. Okay. No, everything seems okay. Okay, there is a toadstool. Just lockpick it. We don't know the code. This looks like cells. Uh huh. A carrot. How did the guy get a carrot? It's probably a very, very dry carrot. Sitting on his toilet. And by the way, here there is no toilet, just a bucket in the corner. And here is also no toilet. Oh no, there's one. Oh, what is this? Hard to see. No, it's also a bucket. Oh, he was... There is no toilet. He's sitting on a bucket. Well, I mean, we are in the Soviet Union, aren't we? Our benefactor, sheet from a personal diary. I think we are only taking this one. This one. Eighteen four. Oh, that Krotov still believes we haven't killed each other yet because of solidarity and love for the collective. What a fool, that communist. Does he know that we were so peaceful and happy even after the world went to shit only thanks to our unwanted ch child? The little god we created in the land of scientific communism. Yes, he was the one whispering to us, do not shoot, do not kill. That paranoia squats off, spreads around us in spontaneous mental illness. It's the product of immunity to our child's mental influence. We are breaking the conditioning. We will die free men. I curse this freedom. Oh. What could that mean? Like, is it really? I mean, I think that with child he means communism, I guess. And not, a, you know, some real experiment or something, I guess. It's another body, nothing here, okay. There are some real barracks. The body here, uh huh, well, the joint. Let's collect that one. Not for later, but for someone. Dice? Do we actually have dice? Yeah, we should have some, right? Yeah, there.
Okay, doesn't have something. Toilet paper, nothing in the toilet. We're just leaving the stuff behind. So I'm not collecting everything now, like the pack rat that I usually am. Um, where do we actually get further? What's going on? Oh, no, here. Okay. Yeah, that's the way. It's most likely there's only a cable inside, right? Yeah. Oh. A warm and soft little fur, but more importantly, can we earn a couple? Could cup, uh, earn us a couple of kopecks? Well, we can use it for crafting. Yeah, let's collect it then. Let's get the cable. Let's rip the cable out of there. So. That is truly a good idea, right? More bodies. Eating powder. Nothing on that body. <coughs> uh huh. Or oh, a fresh Makarov pistol. Well, that one we take. Yeah, and we leave the rusty knife behind. Ah, one nine millimeter shot. Okay. And an onion. Yeah, sorry. There. Some diesel, okay. Whatever the diesel is doing here. Ah, nice. Another med kit. Okay, and we are close to being overburdened. Oh, another rusty knife. Oh, oh. I guess there would be a red, a, a, a brownish uh, spot underneath this person, huh? Crumpled note. Crumpled note says, You can stop the prophecy by killing the prophet. Yesterday I went into Vabitsky's room for a little chat. You know what sort of literature he reads. Oh well, my friends, he reads Hodasevich, that one poet who got famous by comparing the life of a typical Russian to the life of grain. Don't you see it? The man thinks we are grain. That's why he buried himself and us in this underground death trap. So that we may become barley that will feed the future generations of cold-hearted Soviet monsters. Oh yes, they think they can hold their half-dead empire together by sacrificing us, by burying us alive in bunkers. But they won't ever get satisfied. I am not a vegetable. I am a man and I will run away from this grave. Mark my words. Oh, I will run. Run, run. Well, that is, uh, there's, uh, that is a bit disturbing, and there's a disturbing comparison to the real world right now, right, guys? Speaking of Ukraine. But that's actually like, uh, it's, but that's really not nothing new, actually. Like, the Soviets have always uh, looked at people probably even more just as a resource, as a vegetable, than any other nation. Yeah. It's of course, it's of course a very unfortunate. A, herme, a, a, a tarot card. A card depicting an old man in a robe. The hermit. Oh, interesting. Okay. The hermit. Mm -hmm. Okay. What could that mean? That is mysterious. But these guys were well off here. They even had soap in their private little bathrooms. So.
Zip gun buckshot rounds. Ja, Alexander, you can take that. Someone improvise. Oh, we freeze on the spot. The locker door is obviously booby trapped. We see several thin wires heading into the container. Oh, let's try and find and defuse the trap. We pull away some of the wires that cover the locker, get our hand inside of it and defuse a primitive crossbow trap armed with needle sharp pencils. Phew! Now I can look at what's hidden in here. Oh! Special ammo with the tungsten carbid core. Now that is something. And another note. And painkillers. Well. And now we are overburdened. Why do we have the spoon? Four years ago, when they told us what we stopped receiving communication, that we stopped co receiving communication from the central station which essentially meant that the worst predictions were true and our motherland was attacked with nuclear weapons. Nobody reacted emotionally. There were no tears, no screams, no sudden suicides. It bugged me for some reason. Why were we so calm? After all, it meant that everything we knew and loved died in the nuclear flame. That there is nothing more to protect, nothing to return to, that there is no more home. The best explanation that I could come up with was our, was our almost fanatical loyalty to the collective. No one wanted to be the spark that would start panic and mass hysteria. But deep down inside, I'm sure of it, we all felt that bitterness, that despair and unwillingness to live. We crushed those feelings, hid it from others to protect them. We kept it in as long as we could, one step from a total collapse. But as I predicted, one spark was more than enough. Skvortsov started to crack, slowly, quietly. At first he jokingly suggested, what if our bunker was just buried beneath the rubble because of the, some earthquake and the mountains? Then came the paranoia. What if our loved ones are alive and safe? Maybe it's just us who were removed from all the official papers, thanks to the secrecy of our work here. Now he and those who listened to him prepare themse prepared themselves for the armed to take on the soldiers' barracks, wanting to unseal the bunker. Nobody will survive this battle. Tja. Yeah, let's put the wires away. And by the way, why do we have an unsharpened knife here? There. We love sharpened knives, don't we? There. Yeah, this thing here is pretty heavy. That's one of the problems we have. So, well. I mean, it's certainly, um, it's certainly a huge challenge to be inside a of a bunker like this, in a situation like this, super glue collect that one. We are not leaving the heavy cabbage behind. Another photo stat over there. Port wine, well, let's take the paper. Everything else. Photo stat. Where's the photo stat? Oh no, where's the photo stat? Or was it the same one that we found before? Huh? It said that there were great numbers. It's thief passport. Yeah. Photo stat. Yeah, for the note by Major Verbitsky. So that's the same one. Okay, we're just cluttering up our inventory with the stuff. More super glue. Well, the super glue is rather rare, actually. Paper. 
We are still thinking of the journalists, right? Nothing on that body. It's all relatively clean as well. Aha, medal. Well, Alexander can use the medal. This here we take. Computers, just here in the corridor. Okay. Ah, yeah, and this here, uh, this is the the blue wing. Then I guess with more barracks and more uh, areas people lived. Okay, well, let's check this one out. Maybe we find something. Although time is running, but let's check the first area out. So is there anything here? No. Nothing to interact with this. What is this? Is this like propane gas or something? Oh. oh yeah, someone with a rifle in actually pretty good condition. Fire extinguisher. Roasted meat? What is it doing here? Well, Joel Bar, you can be entrusted with the roasted meat, right? Being a dog. That's for sure. Okay, nothing there. Yeah. Well, let's take the fire extinguisher. It's super heavy, that thing, though. Yeah. Oh, let's actually firstly do the sphere. Oh, attention! The door opens with a weird clicking sound. We look down and spot a small booby trap made out of a shotgun shell. Let's defuse the, the device. We quickly cut a wire leading to the shotgun shell and then screw out the shell itself. Seems like it was filled with basic table salt. Not deadly, but can sure leave a mark. Who made this weird baffling trap? Nicely done. I'm ready to live another day. Okay, shotgun shell with, with salt. Lots of cables excess cable so we are of course not ripping out uh, anything just like that oh some wolf antidote but just those cables that are uh, so long that we don't know what's going on so all right then so i think this is where we can end this episode we already explored quite a bit of this bunker and um, yeah we'll see what happens next in the next episode and there we will see what's going on with this guy who has this pretty good weapon there which we don't need unfortunately but yeah it's fine i think it's fine so we made some good progress and now we know that there is uh, well there's something going on in this bunker for sure so and what that is we will find out Thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, please do click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, so never ever miss an episode again. See you next time. Bye bye.